I've always felt a lot more comfortable speaking and singing and storytelling through the violin than I am with my voice. Growing up, I was extraordinarily shy and I found it really, really difficult to say a word in front of anyone. And I basically don't remember really saying anything to anyone until I was 14 and went to the Perlman Music Program, where suddenly I was surrounded by tons of people who loved the same thing as I did and somehow that opened me up a little bit. People used to say that I turned into a different person when I picked up the violin, and I used to sort of resent that. And because people said that, I think I tried to hide my shyness when I was on stage. But as I spend more and more time on stage and I get a little bit older, I really think that it's impossible to hide who you are on stage. And when I tell my stories through the music anyway, I actually try to really just be myself on the stage. And that's something that my mom, who's not a musician at all, always <laughs> says, she says, good lucky and be yourself. And that's kind of my mantra now. I fell in love with the violin when I heard a girl play it. I think I was seven years old and it was kind of about the beauty of the tone. And even though she was just, you know, eight or nine years old, I could hear a story that she was telling through the violin. That's what drew me and that's what I wanted to do. And so most times, I think that's what I look for first when I learn a piece. I look at the clues that the composer gave us in the score, and I think, what is the emotional journey? What is the mood? Who is the narrator? And I find that that's the most fun place to start from. So for example, right now I'm working on a couple pieces by Dvorak, and one is the Sonatina, which Dvorak wrote for his children. And that's a really fun place for me to be, to work in, because it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's simple at times, it's so playful, charming, and innocent, yet it's never trite. I've always been obsessed with the profound and the meaningful, but it's fun to bring in that delightful side to music, and that's something that um, I've been very interested in lately, and I'm really enjoying working on it in this sonatina. We all spend time alone working on our parts with the instrument, with the score. But the moment that you step into the first rehearsal, everything changes. You know, I think before we even like discuss, let's just play. I don't agree with the tempo. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to simultaneously have the confidence and trust your partners enough to fully express your ideas, yet at the same time be completely alert and sensitive and um, vulnerable and willing to hear what else is going on at the exact same time. In bar 49. Knowing we have a forte coming up, can we not open up the sound too much there so we're saving, like it's just a hint of opening up, but yeah. then we're gonna save it till we get to the forte where it can really be back to the resolute tone. Yeah. That's a lot of the magic and what makes it so fun to rehearse, but also when you get on stage, every performance is not the ultimate goal. It is one beautiful moment in the walk of life. 
in this field, a lot of us suffer from perfectionism. And so it's easy to sort of think of a concert as a high pressure event where you have to perform your best and you work up to that best. But at a certain level, there's no best anymore. And there's only the magic of whatever happens on that day. And I think it makes the nerves good nerves instead of bad nerves. I'm excited to be nervous actually, because I know I care about what's gonna come out and I'm very proud and excited to share it with my colleagues in the audience. The Chamber Music Society thanks you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support.